chapter number 19, we see that King Hezekiah and the nation of Judah is facing here some oppression of their own at the hands of the Assyrians. And the spokesman for the king of Assyria, Rabshakeh, encouraging the people to just surrender to him. Your God cannot save you. We have conquered many other kingdoms and their gods did not save them. There's one thing I want you to notice that I didn't point out, but I want you to notice this. Rabshakeh equated the almighty God of Israel equal to the idols of the lands that they had conquered. They will be surprised. The power of the almighty God. And so, <clears throat> the representatives that King Hezekiah sent to be able to hear the words of Rabshakeh came back to Hezekiah, gave their report. That drove Hezekiah to sackcloth and ashes and to the house of God to pray. And he sent two of the representatives that listened to Rabshakeh's words to the prophet Isaiah we saw last week. And asked the prophet Isaiah to be able to pray for the remnant, the remnant of Judah. And we pick up there, we pick up there, as we read there in verse number three, we pick up there. The Bible says, and they said, and they said unto him, thus saith Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, hath sent to reprove, to reproach the, re the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servant, which with the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon them, and he shall bear a rumor and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, and pray now, Lord, that you will work and bless. Help us now, Lord, to be able to come to you in our times of trouble and trial. We pray for our nation. We pray that, Lord, you will intervene in this coronavirus. You will intervene. The government officials and the oppression that churches are going through in our nation because of restrictive laws. Because, Lord, you can change the hearts of the leaders of our nation. Lord, you can touch them. You can turn them. And Father, we pray that your will would be done in doing so. We pray that we can continue to be a nation that has the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience. And Lord, we pray that we may have that freedom preserved by your powerful and mighty hand. We ask now, Lord, that you will bless this time in the word and the prayer time to come. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Eliakim and Shebna, two of the representatives that went to hear the words of Shebna, urged Isaiah to pray. And he, they urged Isaiah to pray for two things. First of all, to ask them to pray for God to remove the fear from the nation of Judah. Because that's why Rabshakeh said what he said, was to try to scare the people. It's what governments are doing now in certain states like California. What certain representatives of the federal government are doing now with this coronavirus. They want to scare us. 
so that we all conform to what they think is right. Rather than to conform to what God says is right. Which we must do as believers in Christ. The Assyrians rebuked and blasphemed God. And that Judah was despised and dishonored by the Assyrians. As mentioned there in verse number 3 where we read, this was a day of trouble for them. This is a day of trouble for us. They basically said, never has such a kingdom been trampled or abused as we are. In my lifetime, I have never seen a president under fire as this one has been. Pray that God will protect our president and vice president. Amen. <laughs> and help them through this day of trouble. And I have never seen, because of this coronavirus, I have never seen governments oppress churches as they have in certain areas and quarters of our country. When legal documents are placed on the door of a church that says, you seem to cease and desist from meeting inside your church in America. Never seen it before. We live in perilous times. We live in days of trouble. And to be quite honest, it can be scary. Amen. Judah's soul was filled with contempt, with the contempt of the proud, the proud Assyrians. This contempt and the words of the Assyrians were as a sword to the bones. To see and to hear the Assyrians reproach our faith and confidence in God. And yes, there have been those in our country that for decades have attacked our God. But never at, never at such a volume as they are today. The Assyrians were basically saying, where is your God? The critics of Christianity today are saying, where is your God? Just as those who mock his second coming. That Peter talks about in 2 Peter chapter 3. Where is the sign of his coming? Everything has been the same for thousands of years. One day, won't they be surprised? Amen. And what's even worse for Judah is that they can't see a way out of this trouble. They don't know where to turn. The straits are so dire. They can't get out of this trouble themselves. My friends, our country's in trouble. And we can't get out of this trouble ourselves. We can't solve this problem. There is no way in the world we can. But I know one who can. The mighty God that we serve, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, can solve the problems we are going through today. The problems in our nations, the problems in your life, the sickness, the sorrow, the disappointments, the, the, the failures. 
You may not be able to solve those problems. But God can. Our Lord can. And we must cling to that today. Tighter than we ever have before. Their cause was good and their people were faithful, but we are, to be able to coin a phrase, the nation of Judah says that we are outnumbered and outgunned. And they were. The Assyrian army was much larger than the army of Judah. To be counted as the sands of the sea, if you will. Judah was brought to the birth to the critical moment. When if ever they must find relief. One successful blow would bring success and accomplish their goal. And Assyria would go away. But they were too weak to deliver the blow themselves. Just as we are too weak in the situation that we are in to solve the problem ourselves. Just as those athletes that protested yesterday because of another shooting of a black man in Wisconsin by the police. Not playing their games for a day or two. If they were really serious about what they believe, they'd be doing more than that. Because that's not enough. It's just not enough. If we want to see change in our nation, if we want to see change in our society, we must go to those who can make the change. Right? If it's a problem with the police force and policing in our country, then why aren't they going to the chiefs of police? Why aren't they going to the police academies where these policemen are trained and, tell, and, and asking for changes in training procedures? That would make a change, would it not? Sure. But they're not doing that. If we want to see change in our land, if we want to see revival and renewal in our land, we need to go to the one who can make the change. Right? That means we need to go to God who can make the change. And make it happen easily. We talked about on Tuesday night, we talked about the conditional promises of God. One of those revival and renewal that all preachers I know use is 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I forgive their sins. I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Let me ask you, have we done our part? Unified as believers in Christ, not only in our church, but in other churches of ours of like faith. Have we truly humbled ourselves? Have we truly prayed? Have we truly sought the face of God? Have we truly turned from our wicked ways? Because God will not hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land if we don't do our part. Many of the promises that you find in the Bible have conditions to them. And God cannot do his part unless we do our part.
The situation that Judah was going in is as deplorable as there is. And asks for a swift response as a woman giving birth who has used up all her strength and has none left. To be able to bear the child. She needs help, Brian. She does. So do we. In the book of Hosea, in Hosea chapter 13, in verse number 13, Hosea 13 and verse 13, the Bible tells us there. The sorrow of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. The nation of Israel was ready to perish, weakened by their lack of faith and weakened by their fear. Fear weakens. And if fear weakens people enough, people who are stronger will overtake them. Look back in history. Look back at Hitler. Look back at Germany in the late 1930s in the early 1940s. Hitler and the Third Reich were feared. And when they took over Europe, they met very little resistance. Why? Because of fear. Fear that was placed into them by the Third Reich, by Hitler, by his officers and his cronies. And our nation is starting to do the same. Subtly. As it all happens subtly, you understand. It starts subtle. And then it moves into high gear. Hitler's Third Reich in Germany, they went for the guns first. Second, they took over the communication. Just subtle. No one noticed. And then they started conquering other countries. People started to notice. By then, the ball was rolling. And once the ball gets rolling, it's hard to stop. There are many that think here in our nation, because of this coronavirus and things such as that, we're in a weakened state. Fearful scared and there are those who will take advantage of it those who will say in the government I know what's best for you and there are those in our government that say that and they say it every day but we need to stand strong in faith in our God and stand up and tell our leaders you do not know what's best for me I know what's best for me and my God knows what's best for me
but they start taking away the rights, little by little, and start eroding them, till no one notices that they're gone. The father of the son that was possessed with the devil that threw him in the fire and in the water that Christ's disciples could not cast out. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 22, he prayed to the Lord, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Should that not be our prayer to our Lord today? If anything else, Lord, can you have compassion on us and help us? Because we need it now more than ever. Judah needed it right there and then. And we need it in America now. The parallels here, to me, are striking. Of what happened during King Hezekiah's time and what's happening in America today. My time is well spent. I appreciate your time tonight. And I pray that you got a little something to chew on. Sometimes I get things in my craw. 